All right. So let's get started. The first question, it's asking Sprinter. Uh, it's a calculation question, so let me come back to this later when I know I have more time. Okay, question two, choose the unit below, which is a correct unit for power. So power is change in energy per time. So that's what I'm looking for. Ah, energy per time, yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's right, so I won't <laughs> check the rest. Physics professor demonstrates conservation of energy. Uh, most correct statement describing the situation, okay. Far end of the swing, brief, excel, uh, that's not true. It is actually accelerating. Um, <laughs> it's a kinematics question. Uh, Basketball, bowling ball, will and say rest. Uh, the mass of the thing doesn't actually matter. If you might recall from similar setups, mass cancels out. Uh, pushes the ball away. Yeah, he'll not get hit because as it comes back, it'll have kinetic energy so it can go up farther. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, did I, I might have linked a video of it uh, where um, he's very careful to just release it from rest. Otherwise, he will get hit. Um, Bowling balls, A and B are dropped, one meter. Uh, this is four times the height, okay. And this is where I would recommend using something that, that I call scaling argument. Uh, you see it in some of the other questions as well. It comes down to when you are looking at gravitational potential energy equals as mass times G times height. So it's uh, linear in height. When you look at the kinetic energy, it goes as one half mass times speed squared. It goes a square of velocity. And when you get uh, used to using these uh, scaling arguments, you can do questions like this really quickly in a matter of seconds. Um, right now I'm not because I'm writing all this stuff. Um, so because kinetic energy goes as speed squared, when the speed doubles, for example, kinetic energy will quadruple as two squared. And uh, because the gravitational potential energy is linear in height, when the height uh, doubles, for example, the potential energy will double. Or when the height quadruples, as the case is here, potential energy will quadruple. So I think what I'm matching here is that um, the speed will need to double in order for the, the difference, in, the increase in the gravitational potential energy to match the increase in the kinetic energy. And um, scaling argument, it's a mental math technique. It allows you to answer this question really quickly, like within a couple of seconds, once you recognize what it's asking. Most of the time spent is really making sure you don't uh, accidentally do it your own way. <laughs> question number five, spring is compressed by distance d. Ah, yeah, so this is, a, again, a scaling argument. Now, what you have to be careful with is with the spring potential energy, it has the form of one half spring constant times uh, distance squared. So when the distance is doubled, uh, the potential energy actually quadruples, two squared. So here, um, the kinetic energy will quadruple and the speed will double. Um, that's the scaling relationship. Uh, you will see a couple of, few of these questions because I like them. <laughs> A lot of physicists like scaling arguments because uh, mental math makes you look smart. <laughs> Total momentum of a system experiment that okay, uh, is conserved, right? Correct and most relevant, all right. <laughs> Gotta be careful. The velocity is experiment that the velocity is not zero. Uh, the center of mass even could be moving, so that's not correct. And one part of force on the other part, reaction for equal and opposite impulse, right? Yeah, yeah, that is actually correct. Let me just check the other two. A total moment. <laughs> By the way, if I use the phrase isolated system, uh, that could even be a hint that it's meant to be an unserious answer. I hate the phrase isolated system. I know textbooks use it, chemists love it. I hate it. <laughs> so I, I would almost never use it in the correct answer, unless I'm trying to trick it. Um, a system experiencing net zero external force. I don't think so. Um, uh, mainly because the freezing isolated system, it's so poorly defined. Because uh, uh, 
I mean, really, if you, uh, wait, you're not supposed to Google search while you're doing this, so let me know. If you Google search it after you're done, uh, sometimes it's defined in terms of energy transfer. And so this is definitely a better answer than this. Uh, according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, uh, not under, does not experience, well, that's just total nonsense. All right. Um, consider a situation below two objects of some mass are on a level of frictionless surface, okay. Um, moving some speed, okay. And the two, oh, they stick together. So this is a completely inelastic collision. Uh, in this inelastic, yeah, because it's inelastic, kinetic energy will not remain the same. So it's a totally inelastic collision. You have choice of three. Now, this is a setup that I've seen so many times that I have some numbers memorized in the sense that um, in this collision, uh, when the masses are the same, it'll lose half uh, the kinetic energy. So it'll kinetic energy will go down by a factor of two. So looking at the choices, I see this is the correct one. Now, if you don't have it memorized that way, you could, of course, work out the numbers. Um, you can actually eliminate this one just from conceptual considerations because in order to conserve momentum, they must be moving at some speed. The final kinetic energy cannot be zero. So we are really going um, calculating between this or choosing between this and this. And I happen to know the factor of two is the right answer because yeah. I've seen this situation so many times. I have a good intuition. Um, uh, plate balls vertically, okay. Oh, that's a difficult question. Let me come back to it when I have more time. Recoil is, all right, uh, again, come back to it when I have more time. Um, two objects below, uh, the first um, and the two stick together. Oh, oh, so as I was saying before, the, the kinetic energy goes down by a factor of a half and what's involved there, the speed also goes down, down by a factor of a half. So, okay. I think I skipped three questions. Let me go back, make sure I have enough time, oh, barely three minutes. So here, let's just calculate the, uh, the kinetic energies. So we have, um, uh, all right, so kinetic energy of the sprinter is going to be one half times uh, 54 kilograms times 11 meters sec squared. 8 meters per second squared. Okay, that's kinetic energy of the sprinter. How fast? Oh, okay. Um, so what I have is kinetic energy of the elephant is one half times um, the mass of the elephant times its speed squared. And what I'm actually given is the kinetic energy, the previous output. So I need to solve for V. So V is square root of um, two times previous output divided by 6,000, okay. So, oh, I need to print out the, okay, one. Um, okay, this speed. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, uh, so this is, um, I think drawing it, I can answer it most quickly, so. I have a plate, uh, one piece is moving along the plus uh, axis, and the second piece is moving along this direction. So the third piece must be going in some this direction. And looking at the choices, only one of the three, all the choices actually uh, goes in the direction of the third quadrant. So that must be the right answer. <laughs> it's a test taking technique. All right. Uh, how much time do I have? Uh, let's see here. Okay, one minute. I think I got uh, enough time. All right, recall is backward the kick, uh, mass uh, fired, mass velocity. So um, it's going to be a conservation of momentum uh, setup. And I've done this type of question enough times that I actually know the answer, mem have the answer memorized. The recall velocity will be the the velocity of the other mass multiplied by the ratio of the masses. And they gotta be in a ratio where it gives me a smaller number, so it must be this ratio, 7.4. Um, now, if you, if I had more time, uh, let me first make sure all my answers are saved. Um, if I had more time, what I would have done is I would have set up 
the conservation of momentum equation that initial momentum is equal to the final momenta of the pieces mass of the bullet times its velocity and if i want to put in the sign for the pistol minus uh, mass of the pistol times its uh, speed and then solving this for the speed of the pistol would give you so move this over divide by mp the speed of the bullet times the ratio of the masses that i wrote down earlier so uh, uh, looks like i got everything so i uh, <laughs> i got 100 percent. so i must have gotten everything right um so i, I think this particular set i put it together so that the um, uh, ones that will take more time, uh, the more difficult questions, except for some other reason that question one, the ones that require calculation, they should be towards the end. Uh, like, I'm uh, pretty sure I set up the pool so that this doesn't come um, early on. So if you kind of do it the normal order, you should be fine. Uh, just to make sure that when you are starting on a question that could take you some time, that make sure that doesn't affect how um, that doesn't affect how um, uh, how well you do on the other questions that may be more conceptual and you may be able to do more quickly than the ones that require calculation.